Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Every day in Mexico City, 22 million people participate in the struggle to survive. But perhaps there's something to say about that struggle. The creativity and wiles required for a majority of Chilangos to stay alive and feed a family day after day. A captivating city with music and food and a uniquely Mexican, darkly humorous, emotionally charged view of the world. Curled up right there beneath the United States, America's long lost brother. Mexico City is the oldest capital city in the Americas. The original city of Tenochtitlan was founded by the Mexica people in around 1325 and later became the island capital of the Aztec Empire. It was situated on Lake Texcoco in the upland valley of Mexico, with major causeways leading in and out of Tenochtitlan. Xochimilco is one of the last remnants of this vast water transport system, and the floating islands are called Chinampas. These were the origins of the city. By filling in marshy swamps with mounds of soil that eventually took root, Mexico City was born. Being here for sunrise, there's just a very mystical, spiritual feeling. And all you can hear are just the sounds of nature, the sounds of the birds. And it is so peaceful. It's just awe-inspiring that this is all man-made and we're talking about 800 years of history here. Some people even think it's a thousand years and it goes back to the Aztec period. Mexico City was built on a lake. And to be here and to see this, it's literally like going back to the beginning of, you know, the birth of this city. Today, Mexico City is the most densely populated city in North America, with over 22 million people and its skyline is punctuated with skyscrapers reminiscent of a modern-day megalopolis. The remnants of the old Aztec city of Tenochtitlan are buried beneath what is now modern-day Mexico City, and some ruins like the Templo Mayor have been excavated and are visible in the historic center. The fall of the Aztec Empire and the city of Tenochtitlan in 1521 and the subsequent destruction and rebuilding of the city by the Spanish began a new era of colonialist rule, which would last several centuries before independence finally arrived for the Mexicans in 1821. It's amazing to be here in the historic center of Mexico City and it's really the beating heart of the city. This is where you really feel the centuries of tradition, the centuries of history. You see so many historical landmarks here like the cathedral and the old ruins of the Aztec temple. So it's pretty incredible because you literally see the fusion of the indigenous population, the Aztecs, and then later on the colonial period of history when the Spanish conquered Mexico City. It's like history brought to life. I have come to a very traditional place in Mexico City. These places are called pulquerias. Pulque is basically fermented sap from the agave plant. This is where you're going to really see some true Mexican culture. Wow. This place is absolutely packed full of people drinking pulque. It's crazy. They have loads of different flavors, so it's basically mixed with different fruits. I might try 
the guayaba. Guayaba is like the typical Mexican fruit, so that's the flavoured one they have. Wow, so I found some friends very quickly that invited me to sit down. And uh, salud! 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 to an institution here in Mexico City when it comes to tacos al pastor, which are the quintessential, iconic Mexico City taco. This place is actually really cool because it's like a mechanics during the daytime, taqueria during the nighttime, and they are just grilling really juicy looking bits of pork. That's specialty here. And you can see the amazing pieces of pineapple, which are also being grilled on the skewer. I cannot wait to try it, really great. Okay, tacos al pastor are here and they look absolutely delicious. And you've got plenty of condiments on the table to put on your tacos. A lot of them are sauces, I'm sure they're very spicy. Put some of this green sauce, which is the least spicy. Mm. That is an amazing taco, by far the best taco I've had so far. I would never put pineapple together with pork, but actually cut through the spice a bit as well, which I like. I'm in Mexico City and I'm currently working on my website. I build my website using Squarespace and it's super easy to use. So I want to show you how I do it. Go onto their website and you can browse hundreds of templates or create one from scratch, which is what I'm going to do. So let's get started. I can name my site and choose sections for my home page. I can choose a color palette and font to suit my brand and I love the tips that come up throughout the process. Once I upload my background photo, I can get started on other sections like writing an about me bio, which is so easy with the drag and drop functionality powered by Fluid Engine. I want to show you how my website looks so you can see how easy Squarespace makes it to have a very professional looking website. I've gone for a clean, minimal aesthetic, which I love. So get started on building your website today and you can get a free trial and an amazing 10% off when you use my code Melini Angelica. 
just head to squarespace.com forward slash Malini Angelica. So I hope you have fun building a really amazing professional looking website. Starting off the day with probably the most famous Mexico City breakfast street food, Tortas de Chilaquiles. There is a huge queue for this place. It is incredibly popular and you can smell it. it smells insane. So you basically have mole, your beans, your refried beans, deep fried tortilla chips, and then choose a protein. So I went for shredded chicken. You can get a milanesa de pollo, which is more like a slice of chicken. And then you either choose salsa roja, salsa verde, green or red sauce, your crema, your cream and your cheese. This has become like the most popular Mexican breakfast street food and it is insane. Mm. The cream cheese that they have here is so good. And that salsa verde, that green sauce, mm, it's got like a hint of spice. Has to be the best breakfast you can get yourself when you come to Mexico City. So this place, Xochimilco, is really cool. It has got so much history. It dates back to the pre-Columbus era. And now you've got all these canals which are in between the Chinampas, the floating islands. And I'm on what is a very old school Mexican wooden boat. Then they're called trajineras. And so you've got so many of them now. They've each got their own names. Mine's called Lupita. Also what's really cool is that you have little boats and they're basically selling margarita, michelada, which I really want to get, food. So everyone just comes on a weekend. Families, friends, Mexicans, locals, tourists. It's just like a really nice day out and it's like beautiful weather. ¿Qué, qué es un michelada? Es tamarindo. Tamarindo, ah. Cerveza, corona. Cerveza, tiene limón. What a great way of getting drinks on this boat, seriously. ¿Y eso? Clamato. Jugo de tomate con almeja. Ah, jugo de tomate, like tomato juice, wow. Muchos condimentos, es rico. Ahora sí. Muchísimas gracias, wow, look at that. Mira esto. Wow. Margaritas, palomas, we see. Rico. Mm. Refrescante. It's muy refrescante. It's delicious. It's so nice. It's got so much stuff in it. I'm like, whoa. These people have the best music. Got la reggaeton. Solo quería decir hola a todos. Todos son de aquí, de Ciudad de México. Sí. ¿Qué tal? Di cuéntame sobre este lugar. Xochimilco. Ah, él, él es experto. Es experto. ¿Qué, qué están haciendo hoy? O sea, es... Feliz cumpleaños. Ah, feliz cumpleaños. O sea, estás como festejando, bebiendo reggaetón. Sí, 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 si quieres, ¿no? A mí me encanta el reggaetón. Wow. Es un parlante. Wow. Ella se revela de novio y con la guayana. Ella se revela de novio y con la guayana. La vista se ve en tu t-shirt. La vista a mover. It's so fun because you could just hop onto people's boats and join them and party with them. Gotta love it. Hola, siga con el mariachi. 
you have a lot of people asking you of course like mariachi mariachi but definitely think i'm gonna have to get somebody to sing me my favorite mexican song Encantó, me encantó. Muchísimas gracias. So, so good, so good. Tepito is a barrio with an urban, economic and cultural ecosystem all its own. A never-ending underground river of counterfeit products, pirated goods and drugs flowing into it. Commerce and everything else in Tepito, it seems, is pursued along boundaries where official legality and lawlessness are blurred. It is also, to many, the heart and soul of Mexico City where Tianguis are run by members of the same family who often live in the barrio and raise their children according to its insular laws and codes. Honestly, it's so good to come to a place like Tepito. You've got literally so much stuff that's being sold. And, you know, this is really like true Mexican city life. This is where a lot of the Mexicans come to shop for their clothes, for everything really. And you'll see a lot of it is, you know, counterfeit products. Literally any type of clothing you want, you're gonna find it here. Everybody's so friendly, smiling, talking to you. Oh my God, I, Mexicans are like the best people and so friendly and so happy and so full of life. I love it. Hola. Hola. Que tal? Que linda. Como te llamas? Victoria. Victoria. She's so sweet. Oh my God, so sweet. Wow, everyone's having a right old party in this market. It's hilarious. Yeah, actualmente están bebiendo acá, acá, aparte de micheladas. Es micheladas bacardí. ¿Qué es esto? Bacardí con con fruta. Con frutas, frutos rojos. Así lo tomas no más. Así lo tomas no más. Sí, muy rico. Okay, I'm going to stick to trying the michelada because I think that's very popular here. That's quite the mighty drink. Mm. Wow, yeah, it's good. It pretty much tastes like beer mixed with lime juice. Okay, so I got my michelada and I'm now going to try some of the food in this market, which is meant to be delicious. barrio de Tepito. Es bonito. Es bueno. Sí. Sí. Tiene mala fama, pero. Pero ¿por qué? O sea, a mí me gusta. Yo he venido acá y la y la gente es muy amable. El barrio bravo, ¿no? El barrio bravo de Tepito. El barrio bravo de Tepito. Aquí siempre hay actividad que sea de noche. Wow. Estas son las migas. Estas son las migas. Wow. Bonito es el caldito con el barrio. Wow. Aquí las preparamos, güerita, sí. con diferentes tipos de especias. Nosotros, permiso, ¿eh, güera? Ah, ok. Lo que contamos es con oreganito y chile. Oregano. Ahorita nuestra mesera les va a preparar las migas a como se las comen aquí. Ok. Oreganito, Oregano. chile. Oregano. Y el limón. El limón. Wow. Yo le pongo esto y usted ya si quiere más, ya le pone más. Gracias. So good. Delicious. It's got that richness because the soup is a base of boiled pork bones and then they thicken the soup with pieces of um, stale bread and tortilla. And it is honestly so flavoursome and so delicious. Wow. 
Also love how it's so communal. People are so friendly here, they just sit next to you, strike up a conversation. It's so nice, honestly. Eres de Tepito. Yo soy nativa de Tepito. ¿Es tu hijito? Mi nieto. ¿Mi nieto? No, pero te ves tan joven. No puede ser, no puede ser abuela, no. Es que las abuelas de ahora son más jóvenes. Y la verdad somos más jóvenes. ¿Tú también eres abuela? No. Ay, Yo he escuchado que hay como un dicho acá en, en México, ¿no? Para comer. ¿Cómo es? ¿Cómo es? Ah, ok. Es come bien. Come bien. Coge fuerte. Coge fuerte. Los huevos a la muerte. Y, y, y eh, cuesta los bueno. huevos a la muerte. Te vas a morir bien contento. Sí, feliz y, y no con hambre. Exacto. Exacto. Bien cortito ahí. Aquí lo que abunda es la grasa. Por eso es tanto beso. <risa> Mexico is rich in ingredients and beverages that tell the story of many generations of Mexicans. Perhaps none more emblematic than mezcal, the so-called nectar of the gods. And at Mezcaleria Tierra Seca, they use this space as a way to tell stories and pay homage to pre-Hispanic traditions. We can talk about ancestral mezcal before the Spanish colonization. Mezcal is a very ancient spirit. We believe it's about 2,000 years old. The plant of the agave is a plant that can give us so many things. It can give us food, it can give us a roof, it can give us clothes, and it can give us to drink. So that's why the Aztec, they used to associate the goddess Mayahuel with the goddess of the agave. It feels like there's a lot of spirituality behind Absolutely. mezcal. Especially these mezcals, when you drink them, they will give you a very particular euphoria. What kind of euphoria do you get when you drink mezcal? It's a, it's a very, very completely different from all the other alcohol that I've ever tried. Because as I said, imagine here, you, you drink a lot of energy. A lot, of, a energy. lot of history. A lot of history, a lot of... The energy of the moon here is going to be really present in your body. So it's almost ceremonial. 100%. Here in Mexico, we say that we drink it by besitos, which means we kiss mezcal. We make love mezcal, okay? We respect it. Close your eyes, have a sip of mezcal, try to identify the notes. And it also can be in memories. Very mystical and very smoky. I can almost imagine a ceremony taking place because if you're putting it underground and, and, and cooking it with volcanic rocks, it's like a connection to Mother Nature and to the gods that they had. It transports me to another world, another place, and another time. If you close your Drinking eyes, almost, you, can see, you can see the pyramids, you can see... The pyramids, like... The, the ancient Mexicas walking around. It is like drinking history. Absolutely. Dijve. Dijve. Pre-Columbian Mexico, there were gods and goddesses for the celestial bodies. Here in Teotihuacan, the Pyramid of the Sun and of the Moon. The ancestors were in tune with planetary and celestial alignment. They knew that the sun and the moon were pure energy that could feed our planet and control the tides for millions of years to come. And that energy is concentrated here, in Teotihuacan. It's just awe-inspiring and breathtaking to see what was built by the hands of humans thousands of years ago. It just makes me think about all of the people that have been and gone in Mexico and how special this culture is. 
I feel like this is a perfect place to toast to the ancestors that built this beautiful city, to Mother Earth and her ancestors and everything that has been and gone in Mexico. Mexico City has humbled me. The people here enjoy the small things in life. Good food, good music, and a connection to ancestral traditions. And while the world is seeing it as a creative place that's new and intriguing, I've felt the spiritual weight of 10,000 years of history overcome me. I've realized that it's not a struggle to survive, but a beautiful will to live, and to live fully, no matter how much or how little they have. We can all learn something, or a lot, from Mexico and its people.